Welcome back. Welcome back to Full Circle. Still giving away some goodies courtesy of Hako Industries. And all you need to do is share your um, kind acts that have been done to you by people that you know, people that you do not know. And you're just here to appreciate that they were true acts of kindness. So, hi, Mwikali. I'm loving the show. The, fact, the act of kindness that blew my mind was when I got into an accident while abroad and a stranger lady took me to hospital. And I imagine she paid all my hospital bill and even took time to see me in hospital and afterwards, bless her heart, Aki, my number ends the five, your number ends the 504. Hamwe Kali, the Massey Act that touched me is the, this one time my client's motorbike was hit by a car and it ran away. I was left stranded as I was on the road, on a road test, but a witness came through, brought me spares and paid me, paid for me, though I was a mechanic. Um... Steffi is your name. Your number ends at 620. Hi, Mikali. I figured out I was pregnant last year and I was really stressed and I felt like I was all alone and didn't know how I would bring my baby to this world. One morning, just woke up in pain and since I live alone, I had to find a way to take myself to hospital. Luckily, just when I was at the shop, Nikito Affair, the contractions, Zikanishika, and there was a guy at Poka shop who noticed Naumwa and he offered to take me to hospital for free. Your number ends at 209. Uh, Mukali, I'm Khalid Rono from Kericho. After being transferred from my workplace in Kericho 2019, it took me a lot of time to catch up with my new workstation because I was very depressed and stressed. Um, what made me overcome it, I involved my God and my Queen who is my wife for she's very supportive your number ends at 714 and the last one for this segment is um this young there's this young man that assisted me carry a carton full of exercise books i had bought to resell it's a distance from the stage to my place and didn't have any money left 50 shillings ya boda nikae katu mtoto kwa mgongo katan kwa kichwa until i met the man he carried it to my doorstep and never accepted any payment even later faith from k south your number ends the one four six Keep your stories coming my way, triple one, triple four, triple one. That is our SMS line. I'll be looking at uh, giving away. I think I have ten more to give away. I think yes. So keep them set, keep them coming my way. I'll be giving them out at the end of the show. Right now, though, how important is it for us to involve professionals when you get that piece of land that we're talking about with Terry and you're planning to build? How important is it for you not to go for Juakali people's? To just work our things together but get a professional licensed engineer to do this for you it's time for advice circle we have civil engineer kevin mulima in studio to just help us to this conversation Karibusana. thank you so much and i've just said civil engineer but yeah. maybe you can uh, tell us a bit more about yourself okay personally uh, first of all i'm saved I think that one is important. Very I'm a important. Minister of the gospel. Yes. Um, uh, professionally, I'm a civil engineer, civil and structural engineer. Although structural is still in civil engineer. Okay. Uh, civil engineering. So by 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 name, uh, civil engineering mainly deals with the design of civil structures. Okay. Anything that stands, like that, is the role of a of a civil engineer to make mm -hmm. sure that it stands at an economical price. Not very economical, but just at a reasonable price. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that is basically. So it. that is what you do. Is yes. it something that you are always interested in getting into? Um, what pushed you to walk that journey? Yeah. Uh, I I've always desired to be an engineer, mm -hmm. but then uh, I had not yet been pointed it mm -hmm. until um, uh, or originally I wanted to be an aeronautical engineer, uh -huh. but then uh, after after high school mm -hmm. I. I, I looked around for for the for the co for for the universities offering uh, uh, like competitive aeronautical engineer uh, engineering programs, but then there one there were not. Okay. Even up to now, it's not very advanced uh, to to the level that I wanted because I wanted to deal with the design, not just the maintenance. Ah. Yeah, so that is how now I got into structural engineering. Okay. So it's like a backdoor. To the, to that other side okay. because basically it's structural engineering yes. only that at that uh, level of aeronautical engineering you're dealing with advanced advanced uh, materials mm. but it's basically uh, 
Mm -hmm. Civil and Structural Engineering. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. And we've seen people get into, you were here listening to the conversation yes. that we were having about, you know, yeah. investing in real estate. And we've seen yeah. so many people get into construction. Yeah. Why is it important for people to get professional, licensed, certified, yeah. you know, engineers to do this? We've seen, uko nyumbani unajuanga nani alijenga nyumbani nani, atuchalangi makaratasi kuangalia kama ali certified ni engineer ama tu, ni mtu alimea tu akijenganga manyumba za watu. Why is it important to move away from that direction? to getting a licensed or professional engineer. So there is this quote that I love. Mm -hmm. Failure to plan is planning to fail. That is true. So when you plan with an engineer, number one, your costs are going to be relatively low. Overall, mm -hmm. uh, your, the safety of the structure will also be guaranteed. Because as a structural engineer, you are bridging the, you are bridging the gap between, um, between uh, the client's vision, mm -hmm. uh, sort of the architect's vision, because mm -hmm. the architect will, will, will bring, uh, bring the concept. Mm -hmm. And then now you have the client now who is footing the bill. Yeah. So you don't want the client to suffer. And at the same time, you don't want the architect to suffer. Okay. So you are, you, are, you, are, you are in between there. And when you are involving the professional engineer, because they have got expertise in this thing, they will advise you on the materials to use, the type of, uh, the type of, uh, let's say the foundation, because actually that is where the problem is. Yes. The foundation, the foundation to use, and if there are any reinforcements, mm -hmm. the, the the reinforcements that are needed. I'll give you an example. Uh, there are places, I especially places like Kajiado, mm -hmm. uh, Kajiado, or some places in Matu in Yata. You go there and you find that the ground is like the black cotton. Yes. When it rains, it's, it soaks up water and then it expands. And then when it, uh, during the dry season, it shrinks. And the difference is so big in that when you build a slab on top of it, like it, the ground literally pulls it apart and tears it. So now when you use the local food is the Jenga, so you find out, you realize that you have already spent on that. And it doesn't matter whether they are going to, to put a reinforcement BRC on it. It's still going to fail. Reinforcement what? Uh, it's a BRC, like it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a sheet. It's like a, uh, you see this, uh, what is it called? E why any way not to make a kuku? Yes, ah, I, I, it's mesh. like a mat, it's like oh. a mesh. Yeah, so reinforce. yeah, it's a okay. reinforcement because basically, like this, is very t this is quite technical. Okay, uh, concrete is made up of like the concrete itself, reinforced concrete, uh, concrete, and then the steel. So, the steel will take care of the tension, you don't want it to be pulled apart, okay. and then the concrete will take care of the compression. So, you are, you are, you are trying to, to sort. Two, two issues with with one material. Okay. So when you when you when you use someone who does not really understand the trade, they will either uh, over reinforce the thing and remember steel is very expensive. So you are going to suffer on that aspect, mm -hmm. or they are not going to provide for it, and then the slab is is, is destroyed. So you are forced again to go back. So just using the professional engineer, they will advise you the. On the on the things to f on on the procedures to follow, yeah. Ah, okay, okay. I, th I see importance there. <laughs> yeah, My God, very, I didn't know all important. those things. Uh, but how do I know that this one is certified and that other person is not satisfied? Certified? Is there is there a, a card? Mm -hmm. How do I tell? Maybe I'm too dunia even at engineering. Yeah. So luckily, because uh, engineering is a very is a very uh, complex trade. Uh, in Kenya, we are normally registered by the Engineers Board of Kenya. Okay. So when you log into the e e e it's erb.go.ke. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you when you log into into the website, they are going. There is a section for the graduate engineers, professional engineers, consulting engineers. Mm -hmm. So you can go if someone uh, someone can give you their their registration number or their name. So when you are dealing with somebody, you can just go there and you check through the database. And if you don't find their name there, mm -hmm. yeah, so they'll, they'll have to explain. Because at, at, at one point or the other, because the moment you graduate from, from school, you're supposed to be registered. It takes about, uh, uh, the, the last time I checked, it took about a year okay. for, for the registration to be, to be implemented. But then y the name should be there. Okay. Because that is the only way that they can justify that they are registered. It's nothing like I've been in this thing for, for this a long time. Yeah, because when you design, and, and the issue is, when you design, uh, when you build without, without a professional engineer, when a building collapses, 
you will be responsible for it. Uh -huh. But if you build uh, and under the guidance of a civil and structural uh, uh, stru structural engineer, mm -hmm. so they take the liability. So the, uh, they will check the designs. So the designs, first of all, they were not even as per the code. They were also not approved. So it simply means that you are negligent, and okay. then you are going to take to take the blame. Yeah. So it's good to work under an engineer. Like for whatever reason, would you too? Mm. If anything goes wrong, there's somebody else you can blame. Yeah. Because if you go the other way, then that means you will be liable for everything and that fundi will disappear. Yes. They will not come there. There's no way for you to find them. Correct. So with this one, I know how to trace. I checked on the website. I yeah. checked and I found your name in there. Mm -hmm. I'm able to go back yes. and be like, this is the gentleman who was in charge. Exactly. And they're able to trace you. Yeah. So that covers me. And it also is very cost effective because then that means if that has happened, does it mean that you will also help in rebuilding or does it how does how how will i be saved from that yeah. situation so first of all uh during the design phase there will be the preliminary designs that will be done okay if let's say the ground the the, uh, the original conditions of the ground they are not yet determined mm -hmm. there are preliminary design can be done and then they reserve the for the foundation it will be determined on site okay so the, you go on site, you go, let's say you, you, da, you dig a trial pit so that you, you understand the soil structure, how it is. Because sometimes you might think, uh, you might think, like you might dig uh, maybe two feet and then you find a, a very hard stratum, let's say of maram, hard maram. And then when you dig, that thing is just about a foot thick. Mm -hmm. When you dig after that, you find that the soil has changed completely. Okay. So when you use the local fundies, they will just tell you that the ground is good. But and then it, it it remains there. And then you are trying to build like, like two, three stories. It is exceeding the capacity of that thing. So it's going to sink. So now when you build using a, using a, a, an engineer, because they are going to work with you throughout the way, they will tell you that at this stage, let us do this. We are going to modify this, 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 and this. So when we do these modifications at the subsequent level, mm -hmm. we can eliminate this thing, we can do this. Because also when you're, are, when you're doing the design, you really don't know is on site. Because uh, as the internet uh, adage goes, like whatever you order and whatever you get. <laughs> exactly. So sometimes you design correctly, but then whatever is being executed on site is different. Mm. So because of that, you provide some margins of safety. So that if, let's say, the contractor uh, on site decides to use, let's say, uh, three cements instead of five that were recommended, you have provided a margin. But now when you're working with the, with the client, because you are there, you are able to do these revisions. And that's why the, you say that in the long run, it is going to be very cost effective because you are, as you go, you are going to reduce so many things. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so we've had this comment about how contractors in Nairobi <laughs> and Kenya are just yeah. doing a shoddy job. So some companies, they are big companies that are doing some jobs yeah. on our roads. When you look back, you're just like, I is that a contractor? Yeah. What then is the problem or what is the difference in terms of what should have been done? They are legit contractors. Yeah. They have been given this job by probably the government or whatever institution to do it. But then somehow a few years later, yeah. then we have no roads or we have no complete buildings. Yeah. What is the problems really? So okay. in, in, in construction, mainly, if, if when, you, when you have a, like a big project, let's say you are building a road, you'll normally have a resident engineer, like just as the name is a resident, he's residing there, and he will be responsible for interpreting the, the drawings and making sure that the, it's being executed according to the design. Okay. Now when that person is missing, remember the contractor, they want to deliver the work as fast as possible mm. at the lowest cost. Okay. So that it appears that they have saved the cost to the uh, to the client, and do in doing so, because they were less costly, they, are may they maybe they will get recommendations. But now you see it has come at, at the expense of the quality of quality at work. So now most of the projects, actually, it's a problem here in Kenya. Mm. You find that they omit the engineer. Mm. Actually, sometimes uh, there are some projects that you work and you are just called when things are gone wrong. <laughs> that we had we had we had uh, we have done this thing and this thing and this thing this thing is collapsing now you are being engaged when the thing is already, already like it, uh, it's like 
they have already confirmed to you that it's already collapsing. There mm. is nothing that can be done. It, ha it has to collapse. Yeah, so uh, the problem with Kenya is the engineer is normally neglected. Okay. And because they say, they say that it's saving cost, oh, but it's, it's not, is and it? it's very expensive. Is it's it? very expensive. It's not saving cost mm -hmm. because you, when you look at the difference between the extra cost that you're going to pay, let's say in terms of the visit that the engineer shall be there, compared to the cost savings, mm -hmm. if this thing collapses, yes. you find that the cost, like it is very expensive letting the, the old structure to collapse. So, so I think it's a problem. It's really a problem. So is it true to say that um, getting an engineer for your construction yes. is the only way to go, is the cheapest way to go, affordable way and safest way to go? Yeah, I won't say that it's the cheapest. It's not really cheap. <laughs> But it's affordable. the uh, yes, it's, I mean, it's affordable okay. and very sustainable. Okay. Because what you want is, it's it's just like a mother walking walking with, with their child. Yes. They don't just want to neglect them or provide provide them with the thing that they need at that time. Uh -huh. Because you see, in the future, this building may need to be upgraded. Mm. And this thing actually, we see them most of the time in buildings in like places like Karen and Lavington. You design a building, and then uh, for residential purposes, of course it. Most of the time, it, they are very big houses. And then uh, a few years later, an NGO comes and, they, and the, the, the person wants to, to list that building. So when they want to list that building, it will be converted to other uses. For example, you'll have um, equipment that was heavy. It was not designed to be there. Mm. So now you are not used uh, a civil engineer. Ah. So now these are extra loads that are being added. And mm. actually, it was a problem in, it was in Singapore. There is a building that collapsed 30 years after it was it was constructed because it was a residential building and then it was later converted into a hotel. They stacked very very heavy air conditioning units and then they came down. So now, uh, if they, they yes they had used uh, an engineer, but then the upgrades okay. they had not consulted the so engineer. So also for the upgrade, we need to consult yes. the engineer. And now when you use a, an engineer, especially mm -hmm. when you use uh, you when you use an engineer, because they will have all the documentation, mm. this they, they will tell you that the foundation can support this amount of load. Okay. So when you want to add extra load in the future, you it will be very 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 uh, uh, it will be very affordable and mm. actually cheaper mm. because the reinforcements that, that will be needed, the engineer already knows okay. whatever that, that, that is needed. Can you give us a price, really, like a general price of if people are consulting <laughs> for services? I wouldn't I wouldn't give a price because it uh, it de depends mainly on the on the kind of project. You okay. see every project has got its own risks. I had to try. Yes. I had to try Kevin. Yes. That's not in case that too. How <laughs> yeah. can people get in touch with you directly? So my num my mobile number is zero seven two eight mm -hmm. three six four eight zero one. Okay. So yeah, so you can there's zero seven two eight three sixty four eight zero one. Okay. Yeah, so that is my my personal number. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, people can get in touch with you directly yes. on that one. Yes. Thank you for coming through Thank and for so educating much. us. Tafadali, to see Fanya Vitu via Chini Chini, it might just cost us way, way yes. more than we had or intended to use. But as I say, my Kwaheris, I have my winners here. And uh, the first one is from Sabala, all the way from Kakamega. When I say, this, this one time I was commuting from Kayole to Pipeline. I don't know how, but I lost my transport. The conductor asked me to step out of the matatu, but a man sleeping next to my seat offered to pay my transport then i got back to sleep uh, and then he got back to sleep i never got a chance to say to say thank you but i was grateful number connection at zero one zero hi mukali i remember when i was in high school i had a lot of challenge challenges and i couldn't talk to anyone or ask for help cause of fear and i didn't have anyone to talk to since i grew up as an orphan and i didn't know how one of the teachers knew i was not okay and she decided to help me she even told me that i can see her as my mom oh Daisy from Lua Kabeta, your number ends at 089. Hi, Mikali, I'm an orphan. And there's this lady who back then was in Form, form 4 at Precious Blood Kilungu who found me a sponsor from one of the sisters. She took me to high school and college. Mikali, I am grateful to this lady. Your number ends at 002. And finally, hi, Mikali, I would love to give to my stepmom because she's been there for me and my siblings. She really took care of my big sister when she was bedridden. Asante Nisana. There is so much good in this world. Thank you for sharing those beautiful stories. Do an act of kindness today. Smile at a stranger. Give a helping hand. Just be that angel for someone today. Because tomorrow, you never know. 
they might just be there for you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for SMSing. Thank you for choosing us to know Penda. We don't take it for granted. Have a beautiful, beautiful Monday. See you tomorrow. Adios. <laughs>